Hey, it's Mark Podolsky at The Land Geek with your favorite niche real estate website, thelandgeek.com. And on this week's Roundtable podcast, we have almost all the usual suspects. We've got the Zed Master, Mike Zeno. Read in the mailing. Read out the marketing. Mike, how are you? Doing great. Thank you. Good to see you. We've got your, your partner in crime in Nightcap. Dude, buddy, the Nightcap OG, Scott Bossman. Scott, how are things? I'm doing well, Mark. Thanks. Good to see you. We've got Tria putting in the reps, Harris. Tria, how are you? I'm well. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. We got Eric, the technician, Peterson. Eric, how's life treating you? All is good. Good to see you, Mark. Good to see you. I love it when you call me Big Papa, Tate Litchfield. Tate, how are you? Happy to be here. Thanks. Good to see you. And then last but not least, actually, this is not last but not least. He just joined us. Landon, the land shark. No, 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 no. I got, I got three options. I got three nicknames. I've been holding this. I've been holding this. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Now, this wasn't created by me. This was created by artificial intelligence. I gave it some cool information about Landon, and this is what it gave me back. I said, okay, give me a nickname for Landon, who coaches land investing, who used to coach swimming, and whose wife nicknamed Bear. Is that it, Landon? Baby Bear, what is it? Baby Bear. Okay, Baby Bear. I okay. did not know that. Yeah, yeah, so you that's because you didn't attend one of the pods. Oh. So you're missing out. Okay, so anyway, here we go. Here's what it gets. Now, Landon, this is not me, man. This is completely artificial intelligence serving this thing up. Coach Lil, L-I-L with the apostrophe. <laughs> and let me tell you why. Coach Land Investor Landon. Ah, Coach oh, Lil. Oh. <laughs> right? Okay. Instead of surf and turf, Mark. <laughs> The AI served back land and sea. Not okay. bad. So, Not bad. And, and, and then the last one, I'm on the, I don't know, but this is what it said. The aquatic investor. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. No, we all like that. The aquatic yeah. investor landed Harris. <laughs> yeah. I think See, that one's I, I think that one, I think that one's kind of like humming around here. I, I think, okay, put into either Mighty Networks, Mighty Networks and Facebook group. If you like, we should put a poll up. Which of those nicknames do you like best for Landon? But for today, like, is Little Landon. Is Little Baby Landon. Bear on the table? Is Baby Bear on the table? Uh, the only reason I don't like Baby Bear, I don't, I don't like and Little Landon. I don't, I don't like Little Landon because I actually am a, a little Uzi Vert fan. And then every time I see, <laughs> I see, I see, I'll never think of little Uzi Vert, and it's gonna take us down a rabbit hole of just amazing rap. Oh so no, oh gosh, that's not gonna work. Hilarious, Scott Todd from scotttodd.landmoto.com. <laughs> Learn anything about anything? Investorninjas.com. Your flights go Sherpa. What's our topic today, Scott Todd? Uh, come up with land on a nickname, apparently. It's not what <laughs> the aquatic investor's nickname is going to be. I do like that, though. That's pretty smooth, isn't it? I mean, the, that AI system, I don't know if you've seen it or not, it's pretty, it's pretty cool, man. It's pretty well, cool. don't tell us because that'll be the tip of the week. Yeah, well, you, you can even abbreviate it, land in AI, Harris, aquatic investor. Oh, oh. land in AI. Oh. Land in AI, man. Wow. Wow. Yeah. yeah. All right. Eric Peterson, before this devolves, what is our tip? What is our, not our tip of the week. What is our, what is our topic? Topic. topic? Our topic is how do you prepare for the new year? How do you prepare for the new year? Before we talk about that topic, a little shout out to this week's sponsor. You guessed it. It's flight school. Learn how the next 16 weeks can transform your life. Go up that mountain quickly safely, efficiently with Scott Todd as your Sherpa. Solve your money problems. Solve your time problems. And oh yeah, you probably think to yourself, well, it's probably really expensive to do that. This training is top notch. Oh yeah, it's not going to cost you nothing. Guaranteed you're going to make it back 180 days or less in their cash or terms deals to show us your work. Learn more, go to 
thelandgeek.com forward slash training, thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Okay, let's start with the aquatic investor. <laughs> Landon, how do you how do you begin your or think about starting in 2023? Eric, am I saying that right? What are you doing to prepare for 2023? Like, what are you doing to prepare for 2023? Okay. Well, I don't mind going first. So a couple of things I'm doing. Um, one, I am starting my new year be- by setting all of my goals, right? That's what we do. I'm listing at least five things that I want to accomplish in our business and how we want to move it forward. I want to list all these things and, and get them set to a point of time where it's actionable and when they need to be done. So I kind of give myself a time frame of what we want to do. Um, one of the things I've already started is, is we're, you know, I wanted to start focusing on marketing and really making that a big push for my, for my 2023. So I, I've kind of made a list of what I want and then how am I going to actually put that together? What does that mean? So I want steps and that's, I'm going to write it all out. I'm going to put this on my board. This is going to be on my screensaver on my laptop. So every day that I open up this laptop, I'm going to see this. So um, that's, that's really what I'm really focusing on and how I get it to uh, move my 2023. I love it. I love it. So because he didn't go first, he might as well go second. The Zen master, Mike Zeno, how do you prepare for 2023? Well, it's about the wind down before the wind up. So basically I, I, in in reality, just kind of uh, take stock of like the space around me, my office, I got a new bookcase that I'm setting up. I'm going to organize my books. I feel like I'm just cleaning the space for some new things to grow. So really simply just winding down. And I'll tell you, I'm excited to wind up because I am going to do the landing fat landing fast. So I can be jacked. I'm going to do 21, well, 19 (laughs) days and I can't wait. I love it. Look at that. Look at the guns. Yeah. I see you flexing over there. I love it. You know, the only way to impress a classy lady. <laughs> you don't know two tickets to the gun show. <laughs> oh, man. Let's see how she likes the goods. Oh, so, dude, buddy, Nightcap OG. But I do oh. have a comment to make about, about what Mike is saying as far as uh, shutting it down before speeding it up. Think about a race car when they're when they're going fast. What's really important is that they break on those turns. So you have to. It can't just be accelerate, accelerate, accelerate. You got to have braking involved as well. And I think ending the year with a little bit of braking, so you can accelerate, is not a bad strategy at all. Dude, buddy, Nightcap OG Scott Bossman, how do you prepare for twenty twenty three? So I do, I do a little something every year uh, within the last one or two weeks of the year. I actually look back uh, to see where I was a year ago and how far I've come. And then that helps me form my goals for the next year. So I've actually been tracking some things now for a few years. You know, a couple of years ago, it was debt and then, you know, net worth and, you know, minutes worked out. I track that now. Uh, I know Eric does that as well. Um, I'm not quite as geeky as you guys with your, you know, with your dat or your health dashboard, but I have I have a few things uh, on a health dashboard, a wealth dashboard, a land dashboard, and and I, I kind of look back and, I, and then I prepare my goals for the for the coming year based on that. And it's uh, it's pretty cool because you can see how much progress you've made uh, over the year. And um, I check in with that once or twice a year, so so that's kind of my little uh, my little routine. That's fantastic. I love how you're using that gap and gain approach. So you're looking at how much you've gained by looking back and see how far you've come and then setting new goals for 2023. Eric, the technician, Peterson, how are you preparing for 2023? Well, like Scott, I was going to say, you know, you need to look back in order to look forward. We need to look at what we've done to know where we can go. Um, And I think that involves looking at your metrics, you know, if we're talking about the land business specifically, you know, how did things go last year or this year, I guess, as it is, um, 
you know, how many sales did you make? How was your marketing? How many leads were you taking to get a sale, right? Uh, by platform. Um, and it, beginning to understand those metrics. So then we can take that and extrapolate, all right, you know, what's realistic for next year? What's pushing it for next year? And ultimately, what goals are we going to put in place based on that information? In addition, I think it's also a good time to just get organized, right? If you've fallen behind on bookkeeping, if you've fallen behind on, you know, keeping your files organized or your systems up to date, like now is a good time to spend a week or however long that's going to take to get caught up on that stuff so that you can start the new year and you don't have to worry about those things that we're probably in the back of your mind all along going, oh man, I know I got to take care of that bookkeeping, but I don't want to do it. Um, get those things done. So you, you got a fresh, clean start. I love it. Very practical as well. Tate Litchfield. I love it when you call me big Papa Tate Litchfield. How are you preparing for 2023? You know, we're doing what everybody else said. Um, I, I believe in a little bit of a mental reset, a mental mental cleanse and take some time, enjoy it with the family, reap the rewards of a, of a good 2022, set new goals, uh, focus on the 12-week year, uh, thank our team, let them know, know how grateful we are for them and make sure they feel the love and then uh, get going again. I mean, realistically, when you got a machine and the machine's running, you don't ever turn it off. So- I mean, I might take a little bit of a mental break, but for the most part, the business is full gas all the time, full time, right? And whether it's December or April or May or June, July, we got our foot on that pedal all the way to the metal. I don't know. I love it. I love it. So you you might do a mental reset, but that doesn't mean the machine, because it's a machine, right? Why would you? It takes a break. I mean, and it's kind of the lifestyle that we've built here, right? Like this is what everybody is attracted to in the land business is you can go on a holiday, you can go on a vacation, you can take some time off, but the business still runs. So I don't necessarily need to turn it off to enjoy time with my family this winter, right? I, I, I can go on spring break or on a summer vacation and I don't have to turn anything off. If I've got Wi-Fi or access to the internet, I can pop in on my phone and take care of what business needs to be done. That's great. So as far as 2023 goes, what are we going to do? We're going to thank everybody and get ready to do it again. I love it. I love it. Scott, Todd, I don't know if you're going to continue with the morning donut ritual in 2023, but I'd love to know if that's going to continue. But what are you, besides that, what are you preparing for 2023 or how do you prepare? What are you doing to prepare? So I don't really, um, I don't really focus on 2023. I'm not really focusing on that because what I'm doing and I've done this forever is I kind of have this vision of what I want, right? Like I have this bigger, broader vision of what I want. And every day I just get up and I start chiseling away at that thing. So it's not a 2023 thing. I don't care about the 2023 numbers and the 2022 numbers. I'm focused more on, I know where I'm moving to and where I want to move to. And then every day becomes a strategy to try to get me to there. And then the, I do come up with some kind of high level things that I want to focus on in the given year. So, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, it was, you know, Land Moto. And so I put a lot of resources into, into that, whether it's, you know, building the audience and building uh, you know, the, the new platform and all that other stuff and building a team around that, that component. And, you know, the, uh, I've got kind of have a vision of what I'll be working on for the next couple of years too. Um, and I kind of know which direction I'm moving in, but I don't really have these targets of like, uh, okay, I got to, I want to generate this amount of money in revenue uh, or this amount of money and profit because I know what I'm trying to do in the big scheme of things. And I really don't care how long it's going to take me to get there. I love it. Long-term thinking. And then the donut, you know, uh, yeah, I don't see that changing. And uh, Mark, it's interesting because um, I was just thinking the other day, 
Uh, in fact, I was just saying about this morning, I was walking through the grocery store this morning, donut in hand, uh, meandering through the aisles, and I was walking down the frozen food section. And in this section, they have the breakfast foods. And I was thinking, you know, as a kid, I used to get uh, like my family, my grandparents and my mom, they, they would buy me these microwavable donuts that were in like the plastic sleeve with like, they were like glazed donuts. It was two in a sleeve. You'd put them in the microwave, you'd heat them up in a little bag and it'd come out and they're piping hot and you'd burn your fingers and all this other stuff. And I was thinking, you know, I've been eating donuts for decades, man. So yeah, it's just kind of what I do. I'm not changing that. All right. I love it. And because we had a little Brady Bunch issue on the Zoom, I skipped Taria. Taria, <laughs> what are you doing to prepare for 2023? Uh, I thought Landon was speaking for both of us. Um, so <laughs> we actually have between the day after Christmas and New Year's Eve, we are uh, going to Tahoe. We typically like to get away and do something. So we'll be in Tahoe for that week. Um with a couple, maybe an hour or so a day devoted towards, you know, our business, us relationally, physically, just working through what worked in 2023, what we don't, what worked in 2022 that we'll take into 2023, what did not work that we don't want uh, to perpetuate in 2023. But we do like to get away, relax, and also reset. I love it. I love it. So I'm going to do, I'm going to prepare for 2023 the way I did last year, which is I'm going to go through my calendar and look at the people, places, things that provided me the most joy and the most peak experiences. So I like to Marie Kondo my life. Did this bring me joy? And if the answer is yes, I want to start booking more of that into 2023. And if the answer is no, I want to eliminate that for 2023. And then from there, I do the same thing as Scott Todd. I have a long-term view of how I want the businesses to grow. And so I think about Kaizen, where can we improve? What are the big projects we want to improve on? I'll give you a little hint for 2023. Eekpay.io is getting a massive, massive dose of Kaizen for 2023, which I'm very excited about. Will it all come to fruition in 2023? I don't know, but I can tell you that the GeekPay platform that you are all looking at today is going to be turned into a bigger, faster, stronger version, more flexible and more powerful. It's going to be uh, the Landon Harris of software. Basically, it's going to get jacked. So <laughs> I'm super excited about that and the Kaizen with that. And from there, there's going to be other improvements that are coming down the line. You've seen LG Pass has had lots of continuous improvements. There is something coming into LG Pass that is going to be game changing, but alas, I am not at liberty to speak about it yet. So there's all these projects coming to 2023, especially the one that is nearest and dearest to my heart that I'm preparing for, Dirt Rich 2, The Plot Thickens, and launching the, the book on how to scale your land business. I can't wait to get that out for the two or three people that are read it. My mom, my dad, maybe two people, but it's going to be I'll for people it, who are in, and thank you. And Scott Bossman, who has already scaled this land business, but for those you, people, you sucking up over there, Bossman, come on, oh, man. <laughs> Trying to make him feel better. That's exactly. <laughs> wow. Hmm. I'll I read mean, it, Mike. You you picked up on that, didn't you? Like, yeah. but Mark, I'll read it too. Now, see, I uh, don't worry, compelled. Mark. I'll read it also, and I'll make sure right. you read it too. Don't worry. Cold hands, warm heart. That's what happens in Onalaska, Wisconsin. That's right. 
We're all in this together. When you're in Tampa Bay, you don't have to worry about your neighbor. They're not getting stuck in the snow. You see someone out there. That's that's Scott Boston for you. Helping out. It's not sucking up (laughs) at all. Ah. That being said, (laughs) is Scott Todd's turn to provide a little more value for his tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something else actionable. I'd love to hear about a sugar-free donut, but I don't know if it's possible. Scott Todd, what is your- Sugar-free donut? What are you talking about, man? Tip of the week. (laughs) We need sugar. All right. So, um, Mark, I'd love to share this um, with the chat with the group here, uh, but it says I can only do message you. So maybe you can change that too while I'm talking. Let me, me, yeah, here we go. Wait, no. It says a lot of participants to chat. Okay. Let me try it. Let me try it. So basically, my tip of the week is that, no, it's not letting me. I can only chat with you. Seriously. Okay, that's weird. I don't, I don't know why that is. It must be some okay. settings. But no send problem. It to me. No problem. I'll send it to everybody. Well, I, it's not even let me here. I'll tell you what. I'm going to send it. I'm going to send everybody on this call is like, what, what is this guy even talking about? And so I'm like trying to multitask here, but I'll get, I'll get it out. I promise you. I got, I got to send this. So basically, look, there's this website that uh, there's this technology. I shouldn't just call it a website. There's this technology that um, I think I heard, I don't know if it's true or not. I heard that Elon Musk uh, owns it or is behind it or something, but it's called uh, openai.com. And the cool thing about it is that it's basically, you can ask it anything in like a chat and, you know, you can say, Hey, uh, you know, what, what is a, uh, I'll just ask it like, um, what is an acre of land? And instead of giving you back like all of these, you know, resources or links to so you have to go find it. I just typed into the chat, like, what is an acre of land? It says an acre is a unit of area, uh, a unit used uh, in the U.S. system. It's basically 43,560 square feet. I'm paraphrasing or 4,000 square meters. It's used to measure land, right? So instead of having to uh, to kind of like, you know, search for things and keep searching. You just ask this thing and it, and it gives you something. So you could play fun games with it. Like, you know, Hey, give me a nickname for Landon. Uh, you know, I asked it, I'm like, Hey, give me, write me a story. I said, write me a story about a, a man named Mark, the land geek. And you'll see, like, I just put in the Voxer for you guys. If you see that, and maybe Rossi can, I don't somehow link this thing in the show notes or something, but it, it wrote a nice little story about Mark, the land geek. Okay. I love this tip. And there's a lot of reasons I love this tip, but I'm on openai.com right now. I don't see where to go to start using it. Oh, that's because you're not in the cool gang, I guess. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right. Do you have to log in? Well, you do need to log in. Uh, let's go to, uh, let me look at it, openai.com. Yeah, it is a little uh, tricky. It is a little tricky. Let's go to, uh, let, let me see if I can get you in the back door. Hold on a minute. There's a, there's a button at the top that you can click to try, but you do have to then log in. Oh, okay. yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. See, it says try. Yeah. All right. I'm so, sign yeah, yeah. Up. You got it. You got it. Okay. So, yeah, you know, so you create your account. I'm not a robot. There was once, think- once upon a time, there was a man named Mark who was known as the land geek because of his love for buying and selling land. Mark had been interested in real estate for a long time. Is that true, Mark? Um, as he could remember, and he uh, had made a successful career out of buying properties at low prices and flipping them for a profit. Look at that. I mean, look at that, Ooh, man. Wow. Right. Mark, one day, Mark came across a property that caught his eye. It was a large property uh, on the outskirts of town in Nevada, and uh, it was a steal of a price. Mark knew that if he could get his hands on that land, he could make a fortune by subdividing the property into 40 acre lots. So far, so true. Right. Despite the low price, however, Mark had trouble getting the financing that he needed to buy the land. I didn't write this. I mean, this is AI. I kid you not. 
right? Marcus uh, Financing, the banks were weary of lending to him because of the risky nature of real estate investments and the demand that he put up large down payment before he could even consider his loan application. But Mark was determined to make the deal work. He spent weeks negotiating with the banks and searching for investors. And eventually he was able to put together the funds to buy the land with the property now in his possession. Mark set to work, uh, set to work developing the land into a thriving community. Uh, he worked tirelessly overseeing every aspect of the project from the planning to the construction phases to the marketing and the sales of new homes. I didn't know that, Mark. In the end, uh, Mark's hard work paid off. The res uh, residential community was a huge success and Mark made a fortune from the sale of new homes. He was hailed as a visionary and a success story and he continued to buy and sell land buying the successful, building a successful real estate empire. And that, my friend, is the story of Mark the Land Geek. Wow. Well, I can tell you right now, it's going to be a lot easier to write thoughts for the Review Digest. <laughs> 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 that, I, but that's not why I'm excited about it, honestly. I, I, there's a lot you can do now with Zapier and OpenAI. And for example, you could use a G, like it could do, actually write your Gmail drafts for you. There's just a, I mean, the, this is a big deal. If you don't, if you're not realizing it, I would just say it. It's a really big deal and it's going to change everything. This open AI from art to research to writing, marketing, even just those chat bots. It's, it's a really exciting and frightening time. And it's just like any other tool, right? It's going to be how you use it, where you've got nuclear energy and it can power the planet. And you also have nuclear weapons that can destroy the planet. I think it, AI is going to have that type of power as it evolves. And I think it's a great tip, which if you've been listening to the podcast, I don't say that, especially when it's the Scott Todd tip, but this is a great one. Eric, what do you think? It's pretty cool. I'm, I'm uh, testing it out and having it write ads right now. <laughs> there, yeah, That's there you go. <laughs> it can write ads. I mean, it can, it's, it's, I'll tell you what, if you're a college student. <laughs> That's what I was right. thinking. Like, you can write is, papers. <laughs> you can write papers, but for marketing, there it's, it's going to change everything. It's going to change everything. So uh, openai.com. Again, Thank you, dear listener. Please do us the favor, rate, review, follow the podcast, send us a screenshot of your review, support at thelandgeek.com. And I'm going to send you a signed copy of Dirt Rich and maybe even have Scott Todd give you an open AI tip. <laughs> he just looked at me like, no, you're, you're really not going to do that. <laughs> but uh, I hope you're getting value from it because this is going to be our last live podcast for 2022. I want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas. Have yourself a Merry Little Christmas. Happy holidays. And especially a happy, healthy, prosperous new year. We cannot wait to serve in 2023. For the last time in 2022. Let's do this. One, two, three. Let's Let freedom, freedom ring. 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 Thanks, everybody. Hopefully, I'll, Thanks, I'll make it to 2023. Survive in Safari. I give my I give myself a 20% survival rating on this thing. Honestly. 20%. 20%. There's gonna be lions and elephants and malaria pills. It's a whole thing. I'm going into some like really like it's not like some parts are going to be bougie safari, but some parts are going to be you're going to be walking eight miles a day in the bush, eight how, to twelve miles a day. 
Oh. Three weeks. Oh, wow. Yeah. Nice. It's be crazy. Very nice. There'll be some really fun parts where I'm to- totally off the grid as well. So. That's yeah. cool. Pray for me. All right. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Mark. Thanks for listening to the Art of Passive Income podcast. Are you ready to learn how you can start building a passive income without renters, rehabs, renovations, or rodents? Schedule a free consultation at thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Let freedom ring.